<laughs> welcome, welcome. That was a good video, amen? Yes. That's what matters, is making disciples. That's, that's our message today. It's, it's about discipleship. And, and um, we just want to welcome you guys here today at the Springs Church. Um, my name is Eric. I'm the lead pastor, and I serve alongside with my wife. My my wife, my, my wife, yes, yeah. I'm Holly. And together we are? No, we are not doing that again. We are Herrick. No. Just, just so you guys know. Okay. So, yeah, oh, very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yanama. Okay. As you can tell, we think Sunday should be fun. It should be a good time to gather together as a family and get into the Word of God because we get truth from the Word of God, but it should be an enjoyable time where we get to serve and love together. I'm, sorry, I'm still, I cannot <laughs> get over this rubber chicken. I know, they got the rubber chicken up here. Thank you, guys. All right, so if you are new here and we did not get a chance to say hi to you, we like to get around and say hi to everybody before service, but we don't always get a chance to. So if you guys have been for a while, you'll notice some new things in the back. We've got some coffee and some tables in the back. We're going to be back at the back. If you're new here and you, we didn't get to say hi to you, or even if we did, come back to the back. If you've been coming for a while, come back at the back and hang out because we love to connect and we love to chat with everybody. So if you are new here, we want to say thank you again for joining us. Like I said, um, we're starting a new series this week. It's called? Called. Called. I feel like Dis that should have been more dramatic. Yeah, it should have been. Called. <laughs> disciples who make disciples. And, and that's our heart here at the Springs Church. But as we begin this new series, most of you guys know that at our church we just went through a transition where Pastor Brian and Ashley, our founding pastors, were called out of this church. And they moved to Texas because they were going to go start um, new ministries there at a church there in Texas and be making disciples there. And in that transition, God has called Holly and me to step into leadership here at the church. And we are super excited about it. And we want to start that by saying thank you. Thank you guys Thank you. for the support and for the prayers and for the friendships because it's been a very healthy thing. If you've been around, you can see that God has been moving over the past few months, and we are super excited about it. And last week, Pastor Sean talked about God being a going God and that the Bible is a going book and that we need to be a going church. Amen? Amen. Today's more of a personal message. We get to share our story and our heart, and um, we thought it would be great for you guys to get to know us. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of you, we've been able to have one-on-one -on -one conversations, um, but um, we haven't you haven't necessarily heard our story, and so we want to be able to share our story and our heart for discipleship. But before we get into that, let's start with prayer. So if you guys would bow your heads with me. Father God, we thank you so much that you are a going God, and that you've created us to get going, God. That, that we, you created us to go for your kingdom, to make disciples re, that reproduce themselves, that go out and make disciples. And we just ask that your word today that goes forth and it pierces hearts so that people could know that you desire for us to not just come on Sundays. It's great. We love our Sunday service but not just to come on Sundays. As we go out, God, help us to remember that we are entering into a mission field. And we give you the glory for this message today. We ask that your Holy Spirit be our teacher. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Before we actually begin and get into our message, I want to share a video because I just want She you wants guys to make to fun of me. That's what no, she wants to make on, fun of me. Hang on. She wants I want to make you guys to know just how committed Eric is. <laughs> she wants to make fun just of me. committed. So we we also lead the youth alongside Carol Cox. And yeah. for a fun thing that we thought we yeah, let's do this and kind of a going away for the Mosley boys. Um, we went to Crystal Palace. You guys know Crystal it was Palace? So much fun. It was a skate skating rink. Center. If you, yeah. yeah, if y'all are not from around here, it's a skate rink. So much fun. And so they do races. <laughs> and so <laughs> some of y'all are already giggling. Yeah. <laughs> Eric convinced, because most of our group is boys. And so he convinced the boys, like, hey, get up on the rink. And so, of course, if he, if he had them do it, he had to do it. So I just want to share this video with you guys. Yes, That's me on the edge right there. I got, you can see the skills, mad <laughs> skills. Around the corner. I just, pay attention to the laughter at the end, please. 
There he is. I zoomed in so y'all could see this. <laughs> I was laughing. Yes, yes. He, he, yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. I was like, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> Let me make sure I video this. Yeah, yeah. I will tell you, um, I still feel that today. That was like four weeks ago. <laughs> and if you guys were here a few, like a month ago, I talked about when we go to the trampoline park, I always take a few Tylenol as preventative maintenance. To the, I don't feel the pain. I forgot to do it that night, so I was regretting that. He got called out on yeah. it too. James Fritzler was like, "Dude, you didn't take your, you didn't take it." Yeah. And I was, he was like, yeah. "No," but so. we just. Aside from the physical pain, like we really are committed to this church. We are committed to you guys as a family. Yeah, we want you guys to know that as we step into this leadership role that we are committing not to God only, but to you guys. Because this is what it is. We are a family here together. We are in this together. We are going forward as a church, part of the church, the body of Christ for his mission. Amen? That's what we're doing. And so we're, we're going to just share some of the things that we commit to you guys as we, as we move into this. We want to commit to coming alongside you in every way that we can in your lives. Discipleship is about living life together. We're going to talk about it later, about how Jesus gave this example. And we commit to that to you, that we're going to come alongside you guys in this walk. Uh, we commit to being honest and open and real and transparent because, listen... We are not perfect. <laughs> I just, I, I, I'm going to just put that out there. We are not perfect. And well, we're going to be honest about it. And we're going to ask for help. And, yes. and in turn, we hope that you will also ask for help. Because you guys know this church doesn't run from us, right? Une. It's, it's a family that works together, amen? amen? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Because without that, nothing's happening, right? Um. And, and uh, the other thing we want to do is we want you guys to know that we want to be accountable to you guys. We're setting up teams, elders, um, and, and we're always open to conversations because God has placed this calling on our life. And in, in relationships of discipleship, people are accountable to each other. And so we want you to know that we commit to that with you guys as well. And that leads into, like, our commitment of having an open door. And, like, let's have open and honest conversations. Yeah. Uh, because we're all in this together. And so that means we need to hear from you. Now, I'm going to give a uh, sidebar with that, okay? I love conversations. I love to challenge people. I'm okay with disagreeing. And there's healthy ways to disagree, right? Uh, we struggle with that in our culture today. We don't want to have conversations with people if they disagree with us because we're afraid that there might be a problem. But healthy disagreement is good. But there's a key word there. It's healthy. Mm -hmm. Healthy conversation is important in a family, and healthy conversation is important in a church. Amen? Amen. There is no place for gossip or division. Amen? Amen? We are here together on the same team for the same king. Yeah. Right? And so when you guys want to have conversations, hey, man, we are here. We love to talk, but it's got to be done out of love. Amen? Amen. Simple, simple, right? We also commit to praying for you guys and for this church. we got to be a church that prays first before anything else. And we're going to ask you to partner with us in that because we need you praying for us as well. Okay? So let's be a church that prays for each other. Uh, we commit to challenging you guys to grow in your... <laughs> in your Eric just loves challenging yes. people. But every once in a while, we commit to challenging you guys to grow in your in your walk. We don't we don't want to be lukewarm Christians. We don't want to be stagnant. And so we're going to challenge you and push you in love, in love in and love. with a lot of grace and forgiveness as well, because we want to become mature believers and live out the gospel in our daily lives. And we commit to equipping you to do that. See, that's a big part of our message today, and we're going to be talking about being equipped and empowered to go out and live out the gospel, and that is our commitment. Our leadership team is committed to providing ways to commit you to live out the gospel, or to, to equip you to live out the gospel. We're in the trenches with you. Amen. We're going to be side by side. Um, when you read through the Bible, there's, there's talk about, about being soldiers of Christ, and like, you don't have a one-man army. Mm -mm. It's... A, it's everybody. And so we're going to be next to you, side by side, uh, just holding each other, holding up the shields, like helping one another. And if you guys are cool with it, then join us because 
We're need excited. you guys. We're excited, man. We're excited. God has been moving. And that's our, that's our hope in this commitment and this new season that God is, is doing here at the church is that, that he's going to move within us because we got to grow. He's going to move in with you because he, you got to grow, right? And he's going to move with this church because this church is going to grow because God wants us to reach this Vegas Valley. Amen? So today we're going to share that personal story. We're going to talk about our story a little bit. Um, and then we're going to talk about our heart where our heart is, because I think it's important for all of us to be on the same page, for you guys to know where our heart is. And then we're going to talk about our hope. And this is up on the screen. It is the main point for our series. It's our heart for this church as we move forward. And it's simply this, that we would be a church that equips and empowers Christians to make disciples. Amen? That's what we need to do. And some of you guys are ready to step in that role to be equippers and empowers to do that, and God is calling you to do that. From leading people to Jesus, because remember, being a disciple, making disciples starts with being a disciple, to growing up mature Christians, that's our heart. I kind of like to think of the idea of like a mobile church. You know, we need to not be having church here. We need to be having church out there. Amen? Amen? It's, it's not just here on Sundays. The second we walk out those doors, we need to do it out there. But it's not easy. It's scary sometimes. It's not easy to go and talk to your neighbor. You know, it's, it's hard to do those things, and so we want to come alongside you with that. It's like um, how Optimus Prime says, Autobots, roll out. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. what we want you guys to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the reality, though, is that not everyone knows what discipleship is. Maybe they've heard the term, and they're like, I don't know what that is. Or maybe they have been discipled and didn't even realize it. And so the verse that is commonly used for discipleship um, and it's going to be the main verse for this uh, series, is the Great Commission found in Matthew 28. And it reads like this. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. And so, Eric, we're going to start with you. Just kind of share your story of how discipleship has played a role in, in your relationship with God. Okay, story time. So this year I turned 25. You guys knew that, right? No? No? Yeah. Like, no. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. 25 plus, plus 21. 21. Yeah, this year I turned 26. Yeah, or 36. No, wait. 46. Let's keep adding to it, right? 46. And there's a couple things I want to talk about in my story. One, of how I became a disciple, how I became a follower of Jesus. And two, how that's kind of walked out in my life, of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. I like to call this side of it vertical discipleship because we have a relationship with God and we are a disciple of Jesus, right? And Holly's going to share what we would like to call horizontal discipleship. This is discipleship with each other. Does that make sense? No. Okay, good. Let's hear it. Yes. Yes, good. Okay, so. We don't want to lose you on the way. So yes, we're like, yeah. yes, so, got it? Good. A bit of my story is, is I became a Christian in my 30s, and um, I went to church when I was a kid. I got baptized when I was in junior high, and it just never settled. It never set. I never understood what it meant that Jesus died on the cross for me. And, and as you guys get to know us or do know us, we have a heart for the youth to help them find their own faith because it's so easy to follow in the footsteps of your parents and the people around you. And we want our youth to find their own faith. Um, so in my life, um, I didn't want it God's way. Anybody ever been there? Didn't want it God's way? Eh. I didn't want it God's way because my way was better. Okay, it wasn't better, but I like to think it was better. And my way led to a very difficult life of addiction. I was an alcoholic, addicted to pornography, addicted to so many things. I lived my life seeking everything that I could find to make myself feel better because inside I was empty and broken. And I didn't, I didn't believe that I was lovable. And so I tried to make myself feel better all the time. And those of you who have heard my story, you know this, but for you guys who are new or maybe haven't heard this, God performed a miracle in my life. See, the world says, naturalistic, humanistic psychology says that when, you be, when you're an alcoholic, that that is a disease, and that you will be stuck with that disease for the rest of your life. Have you guys ever heard this before? What hope is in that? None. Zero hope. You're walking around just struggling, holding on by white knuckling and trying to make it. But see, God did a miracle in my life. One morning when I was in my kitchen getting ready to drink in the morning, 
I cried out to God, and I said, I don't want my life anymore. I said, I can't do this. Please take it. I want your way, not my way. And in an instant, from that moment on, over 12 years ago, I haven't had a drink nor wanted a drink since. Okay? It, it's important because it's not me. You got to understand. So I remember I talked to somebody who does rehab, a psychologist, and, and I explained the story to him. And he called, he said, You're just lying. He said, because there's no way that that could happen. And I said, that's because you don't understand that there is a God out there that performs miracles. Amen? Amen. And I want to encourage you today. If you've got, if you've got bondage, you've got struggles, if, if there's things that you've been through, because I've been through it, God can handle that. And he can heal that. And if that's something that you're struggling with, I just want to re encourage you to reach out to him. I'll talk to you about it. I can share my story with you a lot deeper than what it is right now. We only have so much time. I could go for hours about this stuff. But I am, we, we are here with you. And we want you to know that if you're in struggling and you're in bondage, we are here to come alongside you in that. See, God loves us. And he wants us to experience that love, but he won't force it upon us. You guys realize that you can't make someone love you, right? Yeah. Women, have you ever had a guy who really likes you, right, and tries to get you to like them, but they're just the friend, right? They're just the friend, right? <laughs> can, can they do anything to make you love them? Can they make you do it? No. And God doesn't make anybody love him either. You guys know that, right? He invites you into a relationship with him. And he did it by sending his son on the cross to die for us. Amen? And so understand that. If, if we're going to be a disciple of Jesus, it requires something from us. It requires a willingness from us to come to God and say, I want it your way. In Matthew 16, 24, and 25, it says this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. I like this transition. You must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Amen? That's, that's repentance. The Bible talks about repentance. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. It simply means saying, God, I've done my life my way, and I can't do it that way anymore because my way is the wrong way, and your way is the right way. And so here's how that played out in my life. I want to share this with you. I became a Christian in August of 2008. I was going into my senior year at UNLV. I was getting a degree in biology. I was pre-professional. I was going to med school. That's what my goal in life was. I wanted to be a doctor. I had gotten out of the military. I would served five years in the Air Force in Germany. And this was the thing that I wanted to do more than anything else. Now, in the Bible, it's up on the screen, there's a Psalms, Psalms 37.4. It says this, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, I just want to lay this out there, because there are many false teachers out there that have taken this verse and twisted it and said, what God wants to do is give you your desires. See, whatever you want, God wants to give it to you. That's a lie, okay? That is a lie. That is not what that verse is saying. That verse says, delight yourself in the Lord... And he will give you the desires of your heart. See, it starts with delighting yourself in the Lord. I wanted nothing more than to be a doctor. Like I said earlier, I didn't accept love in my life. I didn't think I was lovable, so I wanted to earn it. It was about pride. It was about money. It was about prestige. You know, doctors are doctors, and they get all that, you know, respect. And so that's what I wanted in my life. But when I stopped delighting in myself and my own wants, and I started delighting in God, he changed my heart. That's what that verse means, that when you delight in the Lord, he is going to change your heart into what he wants. Does that make sense? That's what God is going to do to your heart. And so God 
it was like a month after I got saved. I was just starting my senior year, and I was in to med school. I was good. My MCAT scores were good. I was ready to go. There was nothing stopping me, and it was my goal and my dreams. And it was a month after I got saved, and God came to me. And I haven't heard God very often vocally in my life, but he came to me, and he said, I am not calling you to be a doctor. And I was like, are you sure? <laughs> worked really hard about this, you know, it's been five years, and I'm, I'm, I'm there, like, are you sure, God, like, I can help a lot of people being a doctor, You're like, and he was like, I'm not calling you to be a doctor, and I want to encourage you today, maybe God's calling you into something new, difficult, hard, and you're like, mm, I don't know if I can do that. Listen to him and trust him. That verse, the next verse in Psalms 35, at verse 5, it says this. Commit your ways to the Lord and trust in him. And he will act. Commit yourself, commit your ways to the Lord and trust in him and he will act. See, that's what God was telling me back then. He was saying, okay, I know you had these dreams and these goals. And you had all this life planned out for yourself. But are you going to commit to your ways or are you going to commit to mine? Who are you going to trust? Ghostbusters. No, I'm kidding. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You saw that one coming. <laughs> you saw that one coming. Yeah. God was saying, trust me. And so I did. I said, all right, God, I'll never forget. I called my mom, and I said, I'm going to go to med school. And she was like, I knew you weren't, because she'd known that I'd gotten saved, and she'd known that, God, known that God was already working my life. And so you fast forward to almost two years ago, and many of you guys were around for this. Um, I had worked. I got out of school college and I started a job and I worked at a local foster care agency here, agency here in Vegas called Eagle Quest and I worked there for 11 years and I enjoyed my job. I worked with kids and I took them to summer camp and I, it was never right. It was never home but I enjoyed it and it was safe and it was secure and it was 20, well the year that we shall not name, right? 20, <laughs> yeah you know the year. Uh, and, and people were looking for jobs. People were struggling and Pastor Brian came to us and was like, hey, what do you guys think about coming on full-time at the staff to start establishing that culture, that heart of discipleship? And I was like, yeah, I don't know about that, man. Like, we got a good job right now. There's security. And God said to me, commit your ways to me. Trust in me, and I will act. And so we prayed about it. And in August of 2020, with the baby a month away, I quit my job of 11 years, and we came on staff here at the church. And now you fast forward to the last couple months, and you guys who've been here, you know what's going on, and this transition is happening. Pastor Brian and Ashley, they just went through the same thing of God telling them to commit to his ways and get called out of here. And when he came to us and was like, hey, what do you guys think about leading the church? God is calling us out. And I was like, no. <laughs> that sounds like a really hard job. <laughs> and God was like, Commit your ways to me. Trust in me, and I will act. And we said, okay, God, we're going to do it. We're going to commit to you. And it wasn't until that moment that he helped me realize that when he called me out of being a doctor, back then it was for this purpose. Amen? Amen. That's the way our God works. He's been working in your life for a long time for something that he wants to do in your life today. And there's a couple of reasons I want to share this, or that I shared this story. One is that I believe that God is calling you guys in areas in your life that you struggle with, that you've been, you know, giving to God and then taking back and giving to God. Anybody do that? Anybody give something to God and then take it back and then give something to God and take it back? I like this back. Right? He's calling you into that deeper commitment with him. And the other thing is, is that today, our heart, we're talking about being disciple makers. And to be a disciple maker, you have to first be a disciple. Amen? A.W. Tozer says this. It's just nice and simple. Only a disciple can make disciples. Simple as that. And being a disciple begins with surrendering your life, your dreams, your goals, and saying, God, I commit to your ways and trusting in you first. Then that life of disciples making can happen. And now I've talked about that vertical, that relationship with God and what that looks like walking it out. And, and I want to give Holly a few minutes to share about how that relational discipleship has played a role in her life. So I've, 
obviously, parenting is definitely a form of discipleship. And so... Uh, well, just a little bit, right? Just a, just a little bit. So, like, my mom and grandma, I would say, they raised me, and so they discipled me. But um, just in this form of discipleship and how it's kind of played out and how I do it now, like, it started in middle school. For whatever reason, we couldn't keep middle school leaders <laughs> at our youth I don't, group. I don't know why nobody wanted to work with the middle school I don't know. kids. And so there was this awesome couple named Ron and Janice Miller, and they came. They had a daughter who was just entering middle school, and they decided to stay and be the leaders of the middle school group there at Sunnyside. And they were amazing. They did not skirt around the truth. They were like, just because you're a teenager doesn't mean that you can get away with the behavior that you think, oh, you know, you know, the, the, the permission of like, oh, they're just teenagers. No, that, they were not about that. And they just loved on us. I mean, if, if you can call back to your middle school days, you were probably very unruly and very like, uh, I no, know no. it all. And uh, Ron and Janice just, they... A good child. <laughs> my gosh, they were so patient and loving. But one of the things, and Eric brought this up, of they were like, you need to own your faith. You are old enough now to own your faith and be responsible for the things that you do. Like you are not, when you stand before Jesus, you are not going to be like, yeah, my mom and dad were Christians. My pastor was a Christian, so clearly I'm a Christian. They were, no, you own your faith. And that was one thing that, they really emphasized and and continued to like teach me and those who who um, who came through their classroom, and I I carry that and I tell our youth and um, and Jade and TJ and Jacob are in here, but that's something we tell our youth like and Christopher like you own your faith, guys. This is your faith, so start asking questions. That was something that Ron and Janice were like not shy about, like ask us the tough questions, let's go. And that's, that's what we encourage our youth of like ask the tough questions, like yes, you're allowed to doubt, yes, you're allowed to wrestle with God, yes, you can ask these questions, yes, you can be sh unsure if you're a Christian or not. And that's, that's, that's something that I learned from Ron and Janice. And they, they discipled me until high school. And then that, that season of discipleship changed. And I got to sit under Wade and Dara Gardner then. And many of you guys got to meet Wade and Dara Gardner um, when they brought out the mission team um, out here in March. Um, I've known Wade and Dara for over 20 years now. And they are amazing. Um, Heather is wearing the To Be Known Is To Be Love shirt. Um, I was going to wear it today, but then we did Twinsies. Twinsies. Twinsies yeah. <laughs> but that to be known is to be loved is, is a statement that I've carried for the last 20 years because it was them, it was Wade and Dara who spoke that over to me. Because here's the thing, they said, you can't love a mask, and a mask cannot love others. And so being vulnerable and open and honest, the good, the bad, the ugly, that needs to happen, especially, especially as Christians. Why? Because the highlight reels, nobody, everybody sees the highlight reels. Fine. But that has no place in, a, in our Christian walk. Like, yes, we should celebrate the awesome things, but we, we need to be praying because there's a lot more struggles that people don't share. And bringing that, that to be known is to be loved. We desire to be loved deeply, but we need to be known. And so I carry that with me. Wade and Dara poured their heart out to me and poured their love on me. And, and I stand here, and I've carried that. When, when they decided to make this a shirt here at the Springs Church, I was floored and like wanted to cry and it was so cool because Wade came out here for Yana and Rosie's wedding and he heard somebody else say that statement Hold in their on. speech. Did you guys know that that we have a new married couple here? Go ahead stand up. Go ahead stand up. And if you guys haven't met Yana and Rosie these guys did it right. They, <laughs> they lived and they did it for God first. Yes. And it was awesome to watch God move and we need to celebrate those things. Because you know what? In this world, so many people, even in the Christian church, aren't living for God first. Amen? And we need to celebrate and have a praise report when things like this happen. So sorry, I didn't mean to No, that's okay. okay. And it's also it's a result important. of discipleship. And it is like a, that, result that really is a result of discipleship. Of we discipleship. have both worked with Rosie and Yanawa for years. 
And, it, and so it's awesome to see when God moves like that. Yeah. Um, and so Wade got to hear somebody say, to be known is to be loved. And he just sat there and was just like, man, that was said 20 years ago, and I'm hearing it from somebody like they had met a few years ago and was, was being discipled by Rosie. And yep. it's just, it's amazing. And so that's something that, that they imparted on, on me. Yeah, we that. never know the impact of the words that we use, amen? Like, it's important, the words that we use and that we build or pour life into people. Yeah. Um, the next time, uh, so I came out here to Vegas 13 years ago um, for an internship. I went to Ozark Christian College, and I got an internship at Canyon Ridge Christian Church doing children's ministry. So I was under Jenny Faye, and that's the next time I saw dis- this, dis- this life of discipleship lived out. Um, they At Canyon Ridge, they have... Um, a program called Paul Timothy. It's a discipleship program. And there was a workbook and stuff, and we went through it, but it went beyond the workbook. Jenny, oh, uh, Christy uh, knows, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, so so Jenny, Jenny was amazing. She was patient with me, and she allowed me to, to make mistakes in ministry. Mm-hmm. And then she would help me learn and grow from that. It wasn't like you made a mistake, okay, don't do it again. But it was like, okay, what can we learn from this? And in that, there was accountability. I learned accountability. Listen, accountability is hard because sometimes you don't want to own up to what you've done. Like we see that in children. They're like, uh, my brother broke that. It wasn't me. (laughs) Right? So I don't don't know. (laughs) So accountability is hard. It's a hard, those are hard conversations to have. Calling people out, but also you being called out, you're like, hang on. Mm. I'm supposed to. (laughs) But it's important. Why? Because it keeps us on track in our relationship with God. And we need that accountability. And that was something that Jenny had to have some tough conversations with me. But she did it in love and with grace. And she made sure that I, I would learn and, and learn to be accountable and ask for accountability, too. It was Star and Earl Kennedy who lived out discipleship. Um, some of you guys might remember Star and Earl. Star used to play the piano here, and Earl was in the back booth doing sound. And they were an amazing couple, and we loved them. And they used to run sober living homes, and so they lived with their disciples. But here's the thing, too. When you became their disciple, they were in your life. Like, you could not get rid of them. <laughs> Star used to ask the most probing questions, not because she was nosy, but because I had built up these layers around me, and she was just trying to peel them away, Mm -hmm. try to peel them away, and try to help me understand the root of, like, where my wounds were, because I would just kind of put Band-Aids over hemorrhaging wounds, and she was like, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. Stop. Like, Mm -hmm. we need to actually address this and get it get it healed by the Lord. And she taught me that. And it was just, it was, it was, I found a lot of healing um, from her guidance and from her, and from her discipling me. I also learned a lot about patience and prayer from her. Um, A lot of people joke about how like, don't pray for patience, but truly (laughs) we need to be patient with one another. And patience in discipleship, because because people are people. Am I right? People are people, but we are people too. Amen. And and somebody was patient with us. And so being able to learn to be patient and to see people as they are, uh, Star would operate out of looking at the potential of who God had designed them and created them to be. And instead of just like, well, you're just here, you're just this mess, she saw who they could be for the kingdom. And that's something that we want to see with you guys. Like, yes, we'll see you in your situation now, but we are also going to look beyond and see how God has created you to be and how you're going to move for the kingdom. Yeah, God's, God's got you here for a reason. He does. And there's potential. Where you guys know that we never stop growing, right? Amen. We never stop growing. If we get to a point where we get comfortable and we just become setters and we're not goers, then, then we're not in the will of God anymore. We need to be going for God. And so there's always potential for growth. 
And Eric mentioned before of us being a church that needs to pray. And that was something that I watched Star and Earl do. They would pray. They would pray faithfully for their disciples, for the people who walked away. And just know, like, like I said when, when I welcomed and greeted you guys, like we are a church that prays, and, and we will continue to be. And it's so important. And then just as a community, as a church, we experience discipleship under the leadership of Brian and Ashley. Yes, 100%. We got to hear their story and see, like, they moved. For, like, they had, they had, like, their dream house there in Tennessee. And the Lord was like, go to Vegas. Vegas of all places. Like, they're from the Bible Belt. Like, couldn't they have gone to another Bible Belt church? Yeah, like, yeah. hey, let's go plant down. Sin City, right? But instead, it was Sin City. And so they came out, and they uprooted everything. And they faithfully stewarded and led this church. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord said, okay, Time you're done go. here. I need you to go to Texas. And they did it. And that's an example that we can follow. Yeah, because a huge part of discipleship is being an example, right? That's a big part of, of walking out the walk with Jesus. And so um, if, if you catch it, such the common theme in her story and my stories are relationships. You guys get that? Your relationship with God and your relationship with those around you. We're not, the, the idea of being a lone wolf Christian, it doesn't work. It does not. You have gifts that God has given you through the power of the Holy Spirit, and we're called to use those to build each other up, right? And so our story as a couple, we won't go into a lot of that. What, what you do need to know is that we've always done ministry together. Always, always, always. We lead together. Holly's going to be going through the ordination process with the Church of God because we lead together and we do ministry together. And so um, the biggest thing that, that we want to share about our, our couple, as a couple, our ministry is that we started, we met in ministry, yeah. doing it down in the inner city. And it was like one of those romantic movies, you know, no. where the music slowed down no. and we locked nope. eyes together. Nope. And <laughs> she, she you fell. did, <laughs> but moving on. <laughs> Seriously, though, why do we share all of this? We share all that because we want you guys to know our heart of discipleship. If you guys are getting a common theme, you're going to hear this a lot. We want to be disciple makers. We want to be a church that grows up people to go out and share the gospel. And, and, and we don't want it just to be from our own experiences, right? Because while experiences are good... The word of God matters more, amen? Amen. Because if your experience don't match up with the word of God, then there's a problem, amen? Because that's where we get our truth. And so this point on the screen is simple. Discipleship, it's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus did. And that's what we're going to see from Scripture. See, Jesus made followers of himself, then he trained them up to go out and do the same. Discipleship is not a one-time event, but it's an ongoing process. If we want to be disciple makers, then we have to look at our master and at our teacher. See, Jesus called people to follow him. Matthew 9.9 9 reads this. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. If you guys have ever seen The Chosen, then you might see this scene and remember that scene of Matthew just left. He was like, that guy called me. I'm going. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus went around and he called people and people responded. When you read through the gospels, you'll see the calling of the disciples and he chose a few, but he called many. And the call has been issued to all of us. Yes. And, and the thing is, is we need to be willing to go out and call people to follow Jesus. The other thing that Jesus was, is he was a teacher. Matthew 9.35 says this, Jesus was going through all the city and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Now, when I, we were working through the study together, um, speaking of patience, it's been a, a, a teaching <laughs> alongside of somebody is a whole different experience than teaching by yourself. And Holly has such patience with me. She's so amazing. You guys need to be, yeah, amen, amen. <laughs> But when we were going through this study, um, I found 47 verses in the Gospels that talks about Jesus teaching. He taught in the synagogues. He taught in the temple. He taught to young people. He taught to old people. He taught the religious leaders. He taught the Gentiles. Anybody who would come around, Jesus was always teaching. 
and we need to be prepared to teach. But the most impactful teaching that Jesus did was in the lives of his disciples, right? He would pull them aside and make sure they understood. He, he walked with them, and he would make sure they understood what he was teaching so that they would be able to go out and teach the same thing. And that's where the most impactful teachings come is when you personally invest in someone's life. And that's also the hardest thing to do because it's easy to just go tell somebody, hey, I'm praying for you. Tell somebody, hey, I'm hoping everything's better. But it's hard to invest in their life. And that's what discipleship really means. And as you're hearing this stuff, I just want you to think of someone who has invested in your life and the impact they made on you. And, and how they taught you to, to grow as, as a person. And, and that's what we need to be as disciple makers. Jesus lived the example as well. In 1 John 2, 5 through 6, it says, By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Look, Jesus walked the walk. He talked the talk. He was tempted in every way, and he did not sin. He lived a perfect life. And so if we want to be disciples of Christ, we need to know how he lived. Like, we can't be like, uh, I saw it in a movie. That's not going to work. <laughs> but we, and the only way is to, is to be in your word and to study and be in community and have that accountability. Yes, 100%, 100%. We got to be in God's word because that's how we're going to know who Jesus was, what he did, and how we can go do the same thing and then be empowered to do it. Um, he lived out, we're not going to go over everything, he lived out discipleship in so many ways. Jesus loved people. He corrected people, right? He, you look at Peter, man, Peter got it a couple times, poor Peter. Um, he corrected people, he served people. You read the stories in the Gospels of how Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. That was huge back then. And ultimately, his example was that he sacrificed his own life for us, right? And, and he commands us to do the same thing, to be willing to give up our own life, our own dreams, just like he called me to, I'm not calling you to be a doctor, you're willing to give it up to follow me. And that's our heart for each of you, whether you're here in person or you're here um, online, because we want to equip you and empower you to live out these commands to be disciples makers. So how do we define discipleship? Discipleship is this. Discipleship is walking as Christ walked while teaching another to do the same. It means being intimately involved in another person's life. It's not a Sunday thing. It's a lifestyle. There's a quote. I like this. It's by Pastor Bill Hull. And he says this. Discipleship isn't a program or an event. It is a way of life. It isn't for a limited time, but it is for our whole life. Discipleship isn't for beginners alone. It is for all believers for every day of their life. Discipleship isn't just one of the things the church does. It is what the church does. Amen? That is what the church is called to do, to make disciples, followers of Jesus, that go out and do the same thing. Now, discipleship wasn't something that Jesus made up. Like, this was his culture. This is his lifestyle. So for those of you guys who don't know, like I'm a Bible nerd, and so I absolutely am going to give you a, uh, his, a Bible lesson right now, a historical lesson. So in first century Jewish culture, the Talmud or the disciple um, was chosen by a rabbi. They would go through the, the rabbinic school, and then they would present themselves. If they wanted to continue to follow a teacher, they would, re they would present themselves to a rabbi, and the rabbi would then choose them. Now, a student has head knowledge, but apprentice, an apprentice imitates. They learn and imitate. So think of like a blacksmith. A blacksmith has an apprentice, and they will continue to carry on that trade. For those who are Star Wars fans, you have a, you have a Jedi master and then a Padawan, right? They imitate what their master does. And so that is the lifestyle of the Talmud. They would, so in, they didn't have roads back then. It was just dusty roads and, and walkways. And so the idea was that you would walk, the Talmud would walk so closely behind and beside their teacher that they would be covered in the dust from their teacher. And that's, that's how it's supposed to be. They would take on characteristics and mannerisms that when somebody would meet them, they'd be like, oh, you're under rabbi so-and-so. I can tell 
you look and sound just like him, right? And so that's biblical discipleship, and that's what we should be. We should look just like Jesus, and we should take on the godly characteristics of the people who are discipling us. Yeah, and that's what we read in 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. Paul, the Apostle Paul, says this, follow me as I follow Christ. Okay, let's be honest. Who feels comfortable saying that? You should. Yeah. We should feel comfortable saying that. Follow me as I follow Christ. Another translation says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. As Christians, we should feel comfortable saying this. Not because we're perfect. Not because we got it all together. Paul called himself the chief of all sinners. See, you don't follow me as I follow Christ because I'm perfect. You follow me because I follow Christ because I am not perfect. Because I am not perfect, and I can admit that, that I need the cross, amen? That I need the grace of God to cover me. And as we follow Jesus, that's what that verse means, that you don't have to be perfect, but we should be trying. We should be following our master, imitating him. I love that video at the beginning. We're not fans of Jesus. We don't think he's a good teacher. He is the master. We are the apprentice, and we want to follow him. Amen? And so if you don't feel comfortable asking, saying that statement, my challenge to you is, is why? And go to God. And ask him to help you make feel comfortable with that. Because if you can't say that, then how can you share Jesus with somebody? It, then it becomes a do as I say, not as I do. And that's not what a disciple is. Amen? So our application today, we're going to close out. Our application today is simple. It's the exact same thing that we put up at the very beginning. See, this is our heart, this is our desire, this is our vision for this church, that we would be a church that equips and empowers Christians to make disciples. And we are praying, we are asking you to come on board with that. Yeah. And so how do we do that? And so... Well, I'm glad you asked. Yeah. Part of our role as a leadership team is to provide you with opportunities to learn and grow in this area being, by being and making disciples of Jesus. So we're going to go for, through a few new things. I feel like this music should be more upbeat. It's like all down. And this is exciting. We're going to talk about some exciting things. Like, <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, but just as we talk about punches. this stuff, you're just going to get this from us. We're real. We're honest. It's, it's not always going to be the most polished. But guess what? That's what life is. Is life always perfect and polished? No, oh, man, it's hard sometimes. And so... Um, we want to share some of the new things that we're going to be doing here at the Springs Church. In the, in the back of the table, next to the Get Getting Info in sign here, I'll be honest, I never read that sign. And somebody <laughs> came to me last week and was like, hey, it says Get Info, but there's no info back there. And I was like, well, that doesn't make sense. So now there's info back there, all right? <laughs> Makes sense. Um, at the back of that table back there, there's some sign-up sheets. Now you can do this on your connection card. You can get on the website. Anything that we talk about over the next three or four minutes, and we'll, then we'll close out. Um, you can sign up back there. You can come up and talk with us. Um, after service, as you guys know, that's our little connection corner back there. We're going to have some pastries, and we've got coffee and water back there. You guys, come back and say hi. But we want to equip and empower you guys. And so the first thing that, that we want to share is that we're going to start something called equip groups. Now, the idea of these groups is, is they can be classes, they can be Small, short groups, four or five weeks. It could be even a seminar on how to parent or how to have a disagreement without getting angry and calling somebody a name, right? Anybody do that? Yeah, right? We, <laughs> um, we want to equip you guys. Yeah. And so they could be a, a class on how to study the Bible. Anybody want to learn how to do an inductive Bible study that doesn't know how to do it, right? How, to, how about this? How to go to your neighbor next door and start communicating with them so that you can build a relationship and maybe share Jesus with them. I know it's a foreign concept, but man, that's what Jesus did. He went out to the neighborhoods, right? 
And that's what we need to be doing. And so we're going to start these equip groups. Back there, we don't have the classes signed for, to sign up yet. What we're asking is if you're interested in growing in your walk with Jesus at a deeper level, um, sign up. And, and we're going to meet together and talk about this. And real quick to add to that, like, some of the classes are going to be taught by us. But we have amazing people oh, yeah. here of, who, who are passionate yes. about evangelism, uh, passionate about the Bible and teaching the Bible and, yeah. and apologetics. And you're going to be able to hear and learn from them Everybody, as well. Yeah. Another one we're going to talk about is we're going to start doing outreach again. Um, for the longest time, we've been doing help, help, what is it? Yeah. <laughs> helping hands of Nevada. It's been hard. COVID happened and everything shut down. We couldn't get to the rescue mission. You couldn't get into the Salvation Army. There's lots of things that we couldn't do. Um, but everything's opening up, and we're going to start doing outreach again. And so our plan is next week after church. You can sign up back there. We're going to have a meeting, and we're just going to talk about what our outreach program is going to look like moving forward. If so reaching out to people, things like homeless outreach. We got Pastor Leo, who's a motorcycle guy, and, and he's all, 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 all about reaching out to the motorcycle clubs in Vegas. So we're going we'll to partner with him in that. And another thing we want to talk about is a care ministry, where we got a group of people who are willing to go into hospitals and pray for them. You know, we, we hear about somebody who is struggling. How do we come alongside them? A, a single mom who needs some help that maybe needs some work in their house. How do we come alongside and help them? Yeah. I, for those of the next thing is fourth Sunday family night dinner. Um, for those of you who don't know, we live an hour out of Vegas right now because... Overton, Nevada. If you ever heard yeah. of Overton, yeah, it's small town. Know. It's where I grew up. Yeah, that's, and yeah, we live an hour out of town. We're looking as we're looking for a new place to get back into town. Yes, we want to get back in town. You guys know the housing market is. It's so crazy. It's and beyond crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. it's insane in the yeah. membrane. And, but, uh, <laughs> oh my <sorry>. goodness! <laughs> but. But, okay. no, we, when, when we lived in town, we loved having people over at our we house. To connect we people. always had an open door. And we love being able to break bread with people. We love to be able to, for people to see how we interact with one another yeah. and interact with our kids. And our kids love having people over. They absolutely love it. And they've missed it. And, um, and so we want to do that. And so we're going to meet here at the church. Fourth Sunday of the month. Fourth Sunday of the month. Here at the church, anybody who wants to come, we'll have a sign-up sheet. Yeah, food. guys, it's going to be fun. It's going to be food. hanging out. Food, food, and food. food, and more food, right? And we're just going to hang out. It's going to be probably at 5 o'clock. We'll do 5 o'clock on Sundays, the 4th Sunday. Yeah. This month, it's going to be Memorial Day weekend, so it is what it is. Some people will be out of town. That's okay. But moving forward, we want to be able to get to know you better. Yeah. And we want you to get to know us. And so we're going to start doing this every 4th Sunday. Um, you want to talk about this one? Yes. This uh, is... Phil and Janice, go ahead yes. and wave your yeah, arms right around. Yeah, back there. Like Phil and Janice, back there. Janice is our hospitality leader. Phil is our facilities guy. He takes care of, makes this church look beautiful. He is amazing. They are an amazing couple. And they're going to start a new life group called, called the Silver, the Silver Springs, Springs Life Group. You guys get it, Silver Springs? Because it's going to be for seniors, right? <laughs> ah, look at that. I did not come up with that. Um, and if you're interested in that or any other life group, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. You can sign up on that. You can go to the website as well and sign up. But if you want to talk with Phil and Janice, if you're interested in that group, go ahead and touch base with them this week. Um, the last thing we want to hit really quick is our serving team. You know, we've been honoring the Kids Spring this whole month, and we want to continue to do that. There's lots of opportunities to serve, and this church runs because of you guys, not because yes, of us. Yes, thank you. And so we want to say thank you for everyone who serves, and it kind of challenge you. Where's God calling you to serve? And so at the beginning of the message, we said we were starting a new and exciting season, and we really are, and we're super excited, and we believe and expect that God is moving. And when God moves, opportunities are created, opportunities for growth spiritually, and relationally. And so as we move forward in our series called, called, Disciples Who Make Disciples, um, the question is, is how will you respond? We've heard, you've heard from our story of the impact of discipleship in our lives. You see from scripture, that's what Jesus did. And so the question is, are you willing to trust God and say, okay, I'm going to do it your way, God, your life. Am I not my life? It's your life. Jesus said this 2,000 years ago. And it still rings true today in Matthew. It's not on the screen. Just listen. Matthew 9, 37 and 38, he said this. To his disciples, he said, the harvest is great, 
but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his field. So we've been praying to the Lord to send workers into his field. And I'm just going to lay it out there. He sent you. Amen. You are here and he has sent you. And so however you feel like God is calling you to get involved, sign up back there online. The question is, ultimately, will you answer the call? Yeah. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you and we thank you for this call that you've put on our life. We thank you for this church family that you've given to, to us to be a part of, God, that, that we are able to just love them and receive their love, God. We pray that as a church, we never make it um, about us or this little body here, but always recognize that it's about your kingdom and it's for your glory, God. And we just ask that, that as we go through the week, we remember that, that, that we have been called to work for you, to be a going church. And we ask that you um, just Speak to us to show us how you want us to move, God. I thank you for every person who is here today, whether it be on, in, in person or online, God. I pray that your Holy Spirit just leaves with them as they walk out, that you speak to their heart. However that be, if they don't know you, God, that you would reveal yourself to them in a way that they would come to you and surrender to you so they can experience your love. If they do know you, God, that they would just desire, that you would put a desire in them to, to draw closer and into a deeper relationship with you and then get into community with others, God. We love you so much, and we give you all the glory and all the praise. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's on the screen, guys. This is what being a disciple of Jesus is, right? The second you walk out those doors, you are entering your mission field. Amen? Amen. So we praise, or we praise God for this, and we just thank you guys for joining us online. Thank you guys for joining us, and we pray that you have a blessed week. You guys have an awesome week, all right? Come hang out Bye, with guys. us. Bye, guys. Yeah, come out and hang out. We're going to go out there and talk.